Good morning. Good morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our opening hymn is 465 stanzas, 1, 2, 3, and 9. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy, Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am my nature God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise.
Almighty God, you see that we have no power to defend ourselves. Guard and keep us both outwardly and inwardly from all adversities that may happen to the body and all evil thought that may assault and hurt the soul. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson for today is from the Old Testament book of Job. Job looked forward to, to the day of resurrection when he would be perfect in every way. Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead, or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives, and in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. Oh, my heart yearns within me. This is the word of our God. Thanks be to God. We continue with the gospel, the gospel according to John in chapter 12, uh, chapter 20. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where his nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in, into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Continue the hymn 455, Alleluia, Jesus Lives.
is risen. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. The sermon this morning is based on the Old Testament lesson taken from the book of Job in chapter 19. And we are all familiar with that one quote that we attribute to Job. Well, it was the Lord who inspired Job to, to say this. And so we give credit where credit is due. He said, I know that my Redeemer lives. Christ Jesus, dear friends, we often think of the work of Jesus as mostly being his work of living for us and dying for us and again raising, rising from the dead again for, against for us. But when we come to services during Christmas, we also hear a passage, and this is always either on Christmas Day or one of the Sundays following Christmas, from the first chapter of John where it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. So Jesus was involved in the creation of this world. The Father and the Holy Spirit didn't say, okay, uh, it's your turn, Jesus. We can sit back and watch you now. No. It was the entire uh, trinity, the three Godheads were, were active, but especially Jesus. He was involved with our creation. And it is Jesus who didn't only create, but also recreate. And the words today on which we focus, Jesus makes everything new is actually from the book of Revelation where it says, where Jesus himself said to John, Behold, I make everything new. And this was shortly before John died. He was on the island of Patmos where the Lord revealed the book of Re revealed the revelation to him. And he said, See, I make everything new. Jesus makes everything new. And that's so appropriate for this season, isn't it? Everything seems so new when plants begin to bud and grow and flowers come up in all their beauty. It's impressive. And God is involved in this. It's not because you and I planted some bulbs in the fall and now they came up, or we sowed something else and we know it will come up. It's not up to you and me. It's it's God's doing. With if He withdraws, it all ends. But He doesn't withdraw. He is totally and completely in control. When Jesus was on His way to the cross, carrying that 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 cross, we know He didn't make it all the way. He collapsed beneath that cross and couldn't even barely, couldn't even get up. So they got somebody else to help him carry that cross. In the Passion of the Christ, that movie that was made oh, about 25 years ago, they gave Jesus those words. Now maybe he said them, maybe he didn't, but they showed Mary at that point when Jesus fell down, rush up to him, and say, Joshua. And Jesus said, Mother, I make everything new. We know he said it uh, in Revelation and elsewhere in the Gospels, he said, he said, I am the water of life. I give the water of life. I give the bread of life. He gives life and he renews life. And if there was one person who experienced this, it was Job. Everything wrong, or anything wrong that could have happened to him, it happened. 
His ten children were wiped out in an instant. His cattle, his possessions all disappeared. They were taken by the enemies. And he was bereft of his health. Because Satan came to God and he said, you know your servant Job. You take things for him and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said, no, I know Job. He's real. He's genuine. He has faith. God knew and could look into the heart of Job as he can look into your heart and my heart when people accuse us of horrible things and just think about what they accused Job of doing. His three friends supposedly came to encourage him or everything bad has happened to him. And when they approached him, they couldn't even recognize him. He was such a sight. You know how is it, it is when, when the health of people goes down, uh, down downhill and they look so old and they have skin and bones? Job describes himself that way. He was skin and bones. He looked like a cadaver. What's a cadaver good for? It's a dead body. You can use it for anything, maybe for research or whatever. No, when you have a cadaver, you bury it. When you look at him, you, you look the other way. That's how bad it was. But Job insisted that he was a true believer. And he said, what? I know that my Redeemer lives. Isn't that one of the most beautiful hymns in the hymnal? He said that first. I know that he lives. And on the basis of that, we look at this man who said, Jesus makes everything new. He looked at what Jesus would do one day, and he knew it, and he believed it. And it's Jesus who renews faith. And isn't faith renewed when he comes to us in wood and in sacraments? When he came to us last Easter, joy, the joy is so wonderful. And especially when you sing those beautiful Easter hymns, that speak of life, not death. That's what the focus is. That's why we hold those hymns and sing them for funerals. Hearing news, everything. Job said these words. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth and after my skin has been destroyed yet in my flesh I will see God. I know my Redeemer lives. You guys tell me I'm nothing. I'm a fake. But I know that he lives. And one day he will stand upon the earth. And all truth will be exposed. Everybody will know every little thing. Job was concerned about that day. When he would stand before the Lord like we all will. But he was not afraid of that day. He looked forward to that day. This wasn't just wishful thinking. I hope it will be good for me. No, he knew it would be good for him because Job was a believer. And one of the first things it mentions about Job in the book of Job is that he offered sacrifices for himself and for his sins and the sins of his children. Well, you know how how we feel about our children. We know they're not perfect, just like our parents knew we were not perfect. And that's why our parents saw to it. They pointed the Savior to us and taught us that he is our Redeemer, that he's the one who makes everything new, who made us new when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. He knew I was a sinner. And he didn't deny his sins. And he clearly told them, I don't have any skeletons in my closet. closet. The Lord knows everything. Besides, you can't hide your sins from God. He knows them all. Yes, we have a Redeemer whose grave is open. It's empty. Muslims, they go take and make a pilgrimage to Mecca to walk around the the. the tomb of Muhammad, but Muhammad is still buried there. 
the Hindus are the holy people, the Buddhists. So I have Buddha. He's also in a grave, and he's still there. And that goes for all other man-made religions. Their graves, they are buried. They are still there, and they, they are good for nothing. A Job stood in awe of his God. He said, I know that my Redeemer lives. There's a passage in the book of Job that says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and that's what he believed, that's what he trusted. Yes, I know he lives. I know he took care, or will take care of my sins. He was looking to the future, and we look back and we say, this is what he has done. He knew what wisdom was all about. He knew as a wise man, and we were blessed to have his words recorded for us. Because what? Because he renews faith. And our faith is assaulted. Many of us say like never before or more than usual. It's always going on. Satan is never sitting back. But he renews our faith, especially when we come here. And he renews life also. And that's one point um, that Joel made in this lesson. We look at his words and they say, and after my skin has been destroyed, yet my flesh, in my flesh I will see God, I myself will see him with my own eyes and I not another. Oh, my heart yearns within me. I long for something. I hope for something. I long for seeing my Lord on that great day, because it will be a great day. It, it is the best day for all believers when the Lord reappears and the body is made new again. It is renewed. Those ashes or dust or whatever it is will be resurrected into a glorious body, the way the bodies were before the fall into sin in, in Eden. This was the Old Testament doctrine. This was nothing new for the Old Testament believers. It was nothing new for Job. He clearly stated it. I know that my Redeemer lives. I'm convinced of that. And on that day, my body will be like new. This body that's like a cadaver now and worthless and it seems like, well, it's only a matter of time before I come before the Lord. But by the grace of God, he, ma he was made well again. And he was prosperous again. And he was blessed with another family. It totally changed for him. But that does not always happen to us. Sometimes people die young in life. Some not so young. But whatever it is, we know where we are going and we know who is in charge. And we know why it happens. It happens because the wages of sin is death. Yes, the wages of sin is death. That's always true. It is, it is true. I know that the Redeemer lives, he said. Were his friends listening to anything Job said? It seems like they didn't, because they always came up with something else. Yes, but this. You say this, but what about that? It seems like whatever he said felt on deaf ears, and nobody's so deaf as the one who doesn't want to hear. Lord, open our ears to always hear these beautiful words that you gave us through Job, which say, yes, one day everything will be just right. Everything will be perfect as far as this body is concerned and as far as this soul is concerned. But then Job also had a special wish, didn't he? And this is how he said it. He said, oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in a rock forever. I hope my books are recorded in a way, in a scroll, yes, or with lead or on, a, or on stone. And uh, there are some inscriptions on stone in Egypt, which was five, 6,000 years ago when that empire 
was the greatest empire in the world. It was a golden age. You can still see those inscriptions, unless you know the alphabet, you would not know what they mean. But that's how long Job hoped these words would endure, and people would read them, and people would be inspired by them. And here we still are, and still we sing what? I know that my Redeemer lives. It's a beautiful hymn, it's a beautiful song of praise. It, it, it's, it, it's one of the top hymns when it comes to the English language and, when it's, and it's been written and translated into other language. It's just so comforting and especially like I said before, at funerals. That hymn was written in 17, let's see, 1775, and the music was composed in 1793. But even before then, during that same century, the 1700s and 1775, one of the greatest composers ever, and especially in Europe, George Friedrich Handel, composed the Messiah. Nobody can deny that this is one of the greatest compositions in the world. And in that, in that Messiah, you can also find a piece for a soloist. I know that my Redeemer lives. I was glad to hear the soloist play that this morning before the service. Soloists maybe think the pastors don't hear the special music they, they, they play. But it's beautiful. And I heard it at the funeral once. Of course, you have to have a special person with a special voice. But it is beautiful and very comforting. We, we, we only have to open our hymn. And that is just as good. It is wonderful. I guess you can compare the two. It's like comparing apples and oranges. You like the one or the other. You like both, both of them. Music is such a wonderful blessing when it comes to the Christian church. And when it comes to the end of life, we need something to uplift us. And when it comes to Easter, some of the church fathers in North Africa said, that's like 2,000 years ago, when Easter comes, you, you can't be on your knees. When Easter comes, you are leaping for joy. Now you better believe Job wasn't strong enough to leap with joy when he seemed close to death and when he felt weak and attacked and out of stamina. But this made him see it with his eyes, see the future. Yes, this is the way I will be someday. Everything will be right. And it's amazing when you see sometimes, when you come to people at their deathbed, how they can barely speak anymore, but how the eyes really open up when you hear you read those words of those hymns or sing them. It makes you alive again. It gives you reason to go on again. And we have that reason. We have that hope, the same as Job had, whatever, whatever the conditions in life may be. In our creed, well, in the creed this morning, we say the Nicene Creed, but in the Apostolic Creed, the Apostles' Creed, we say, when it comes to the end of the creed, I believe in the forgiveness of sins. Job believed in the forgiveness of sins. We are nothing when we don't have forgiveness of sins. The Lord sends nobody away who comes to him with his sins. And Job knew he had the sins and he brought them to the Lord. The resurrection of the body. That comes next. Wow. Sins are taken away. There's a resurrection body and there's eternal life. What more can we say? See, I come and make everything new. And it keeps on coming with that promise. When we feel like 
what is there to hope for and wish for. That's Easter in us. Jesus making everything new, today and always. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please stand for the prayer of the church. Heavenly Father, you loved the world and gave. Oh, we have the offering first, sorry. <laughs> with it. the world and gave your son to liberate us from sin and death by his obedient death on the cross. We confess that Lord of the church, we thank you for the treasure of the gospel. By your spirit, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Let us pray for those who carry 
a cross in the name of Christ and face ridicule and persecution for the sake of the kingdom. Missionaries and chaplains, young people who stand up for what is right in the face of pressure to do what is wrong, and all who pay a high price for their faith and their values as Christians. By your Spirit, O Lord, grant them patience and endurance. Let us pray for those who carry heavy burdens in life, the sick and the chronically ill, the depressed and the lonely, those torn by conflict in personal relationships, those victimized by war and injustice, and all who face the terrors of life with a heavy heart. Grant them peace, O Lord, and in your mercy be their guardian and friend, their comfort and hope. Let us pray for those who care for others, pastors and counselors, physicians and nurses, social workers and caring friends, all who feed the hungry, comfort the hurting, and stand beside the dying. Strengthen them in their work, O Lord, and do not let them become weary in doing good. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Help us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Keep us faithful even to the point of death, that we may receive the crown of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sacrifice against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He made his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sin of the whole world. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
they drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for our forgiveness for our sins. This very body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is strengthened and preserved in the true faith of our Lord.
your people, O oh Lord, that the lips which praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for the closing hymn 444.
nice being here today and thank you for asking me to take care of the service. Um, I don't know, was there anything I need to announce or is this good enough in the bulletin? I mean, past the call meeting, you got to be interested in that. Fellowship hour, April 7th, 9 to, that's over, I guess. <laughs> the Spring Valley is still coming, though. Um, if there's anything that needs to be announced, please speak now. I guess there's nothing. So. <laughs>